Well, hello again. Uh, welcome back to Walk the Word. It's been good to have a little break for a few weeks as we celebrated Christmas and New Year. Hope you've had a, a good time. But it's really good just to get back into the new year, isn't it? And to get back into God's Word. And so we are continuing our study in Mark here at Walk the Word. We believe it's really important to to read the Word of God, but also walk it out in our day-to-day -day lives. That's really the purpose. That's why we're doing these, these studies. And we're in Mark at, at the moment. So we're going to be reading from Mark uh, chapter 9, verse 42. And as usual, the, the passage will be posted in the description box below this video. Or you can open your Bibles and read along with us. So Mark chapter 9, verse 42, it says, And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than two hands and go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. OK, so I just want to talk really about um, what Jesus says right at the end there. He says, have salt in yourselves. OK, salt, he says salt is good. But if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? You know, have salt in yourselves. And really, um, Jesus is, is, is talking about salt uh, because it represented three things. It represented the faithfulness of God. So if you, you know, in the, in the Old Testament, um, uh, uh, they, come, they were commanded to add salt to their offerings because it was part of the covenant. It was to remember the covenant that God had made with them. And so it's remembering his faithfulness. So it has to do with the covenant of God towards his people and his faithfulness towards us. But it also has to do um, with preserving. OK, salt was used uh, in those days to preserve meat and to fight against decay. OK, so it has this preservation quality and it also obviously has a distinct flavour. OK, and so Jesus is talking about uh, Christians and his, his, his followers, his disciples are to be salty disciples. OK, salty disciples that that represents something of the faithfulness, God's covenant with his people to the world that that preserve the ways of God. OK, preserve his ways, not man's ways, but God's ways that live it out. Yeah, that are obedient to him and live it out in their lives. They're preserving, they're fighting against the decay of sin and corruption that, that often hits society and affects society, that the disciples are, are supposed to bring the preserving ways of God into the world and to live by them. And also they're to be a distinctive, they're to bring this distinctive flavour. So we're to taste different, we're to look different, we're to be different, okay? And that's why um, so much is said in this passage about sin. OK, because actually we cannot be salty. We cannot um, be in right covenant relationship with God, if you like. We cannot preserve his ways. We cannot fight against decay. We cannot be distinct and different if we are living in sin. See, the whole the whole point is that God has delivered us. He saved us from our sin, our sin. Yeah. Yeah. He saves us. and He loves us as we were when we were dead in our sins. But now he calls us up and he calls us out of sin. So we're no long to, longer to live in sin anymore. And, that, and that's why he appears to be so ruthless against sin. He says, you know, you know, we're to cut off our hand. If it causes us to sin, cut it off. Cut your hands off. If your hands are causing you to sin, get rid of your hand. Because it's better to get rid of your hand and to enter the kingdom of God than to be thrown into hell. So Jesus is saying, he's saying hell is very real, Okay. We've got to note that from this verse, he mentions hell twice. Or was it three times? Three times he mentions hell. Hell's very real, okay? 
And we mustn't forget that hell is a real place. And people that don't follow Jesus and aren't obedient to him and give their lives to him, you know, there will be a separation. And that those that have followed Jesus will be with him forever. And those who haven't, those who have gone their own way, done their own thing, will be separated, will be without a place where God isn't, a place called hell. And it's not a pleasant place. Okay? It says the fire is hot. It says the worm does not die. The fire is, is not quenched. Okay, So you don't want to be there. And so he's saying it's better that you deal with your sin now, be ruthless with sin now, than to just um, harbour sin in your life only for it to disqualify you when it comes to the end. So we've got to get ruthless with sin, okay? We've, you know, he, he says, cut your hand off if it causes you to sin. Cut your foot off if it causes you to sin. Pluck out your eye if it causes you to sin. You know, Jesus isn't, of course, he's not telling us to do that, <laughs> okay? Uh, otherwise, there'll be a lot of eyeless, one-handed, one-footed <laughs> Christians about because we all do still make mistakes, right? Okay, it's important that we recognise that. But he's saying be ruthless with sin. He's using hyperbole. He's using strong language to prove a point. He wants us to get serious about our sin and putting it to death in our lives. As it says in Romans, put to death the misdeeds of the body. Live, you know, live by the spirit, but put to death the misdeeds of the body. You know, we have to. To follow Jesus is to get ruthless with sin. Like Jesus went to the cross, we are crucified with him we've been crucified with him and it's our sin it's our old self it's our old nature it's our flesh that must we must put to death that we must get rid of and it's then actually that we can then be salty christians if you like preserving his covenant uh, bringing his um his ways into the world and living by them and and being a distinct flavor to the world around us. So I really want to urge you and encourage you, you know, what would be a mark of your life? Are you a salty Christian or actually is your life still characterised by sin? It's time to put to death those things. It's time to cut them out so that we become salty Christians that make our mark in the world, bring a distinct flavour and bring something of the character and God into, of God into the world to fight the decaying corruption uh, that, that we see all around us, okay? So I just want you to take a moment, let those words challenge you. What do you need to cut out of your life? What do you need to put to death in order to follow Jesus and be a salty Christian? Take that to God today, uh, pray about it, bring it to him and put those things to death and go out and live for him being salt to the world around. Okay, have a great day and we'll see you again soon.